So, Beast of Bermuda is a very popular and very fun dinosaur game in my opinion. I really like the game and I haven't really made many videos on it. So today, I'm going to be covering the full roster and upcoming dinosaurs and creatures for the game. The timestamps are on the screen now, so feel free to go to them and check out those parts. But other than that, if you are new, feel free to subscribe to the channel. But let's get right into the video. Now for the carnivores, in this video by the way I will be going over the ones that are playable and the ones that are not out yet. So for the carnivores there are three in the official roster that are not released yet and then there's obviously the ones you all know and love. So firstly we have Acrocanthosaurus, this is the first carnivore on the list and it's a very large carnivore at that. However with its size comes obviously a very very slow speed because this is the second slowest carnivorous dinosaur in the game after Ichthyovenator. Acro's damage output is very good however and it deals very good bleed damage but it also has the highest health as any carnivore. The dinosaur has two abilities. Bleed which lowers the health and comfort and raises injury damage. Intimidating roar causes the target to lose stamina and reduces their damage output. Next up we have Ichthyovenator which is the first piscivorous dinosaur and first semi-aquatic carnivorous dinosaur in the roster so far. Now when I say first piscivorous this isn't the first of course it's just a first in this roster that i'm going over its primary attack is a simple bite attack which does moderate damage and has a fast attack speed its secondary attack is actually two different attacks you've got a claw swipe if it's on land and you've got a dart ability when it's in the water now that dart ability will do damage to anything that it hits during the dart which is pretty good and it's a really good speed boost as well caprosuchus now we're coming into something that isn't in the game yet caprosuchus is a crocodilian and this is is definitely one of my favorite ones it's like a land and aquatic based croc so this will be a semi-aquatic as well it's a very funky looking crocodile i know a lot of people cannot wait for this to come to the game coming up next is megalosaurus this is another large carnivore but this one is also fairly fast now what's good about megalosaurus is that it can cover long distances which means it's good for chasing down prey this dinosaur is good for pursuiting prey the dinosaur has got two attacks and one ability it's got a large outward bite for its primary attack deals good damage with moderate rate of attack speed. Its secondary attack is the same as that but it is a downward bite. And then its special ability is that it can gather information on its prey allowing it to see the prey's stats. The Tyrant King comes in next and makes its grand entrance the strongest carnivorous dinosaur in the game so far. An absolutely terrifying foe with two attacks and a special ability which are a large bite which does around 450 damage, inflicts high injury damage too but has a slow attack speed. Secondary is the same as the primary but has a downward bite. Its special ability is a devastating ambush, a fast speed buff that can activate it after 10 seconds of crouch. It gives 5 seconds of speed boost with a temporary stamina freeze. Next up we have Utah Raptor, something that isn't actually in the game yet but here's some pictures of it on the screen now. I love the model of it, basically a larger version of Velociraptor. It's speculated to be very fast, have high jump and the likes of that and it looks really nice. But let's move into the last dinosaur that is playable. This is Velociraptor, the fan favourite, the very tiny dinosaur that is only rivaled with Oryctodromius in size and well it's tiny. Velociraptor has three abilities. It has a bite attack which is small damage but quick recharge. It has a pounce attack. Then it has a climb ability which allows it to climb up climbable surfaces. And finally, for the carnivores, we have Zupasaurus, another dinosaur that's coming to the game. This is probably around just smaller than Utah Raptor, but Z Zupasaurus, if you don't know, is a Neotheropod. It's more closely related to the likes of Lillian Sternus and Dilophosaurus in terms of what it is. And that's all the carnivores in the game. Three of them are not out yet. Let me know which one out of those three you're most excited for. You know what? I'm excited for Zupasaurus because it's never been in any game and I really want to see it in a game. Now with the herbivores, every single herbivore in the roster is actually implemented into the game. The last one that was yet to be added was Kuhilaceratops, which is now in the game, which is great. So, let's get into the herbivores. We've got, firstly, the biggest herbivore in the game, the biggest dinosaur in the game, Apatosaurus, which is the big behemoth of beasts of Bermuda. There's definitely something you should be worried about. Although Apatosaurus is big, it also requires a lot of food, but luckily it is 
eats anything as well, which is fairly good. There are two attacks with just Dinosaur and three unique attributes to Apatosaurus. One of them, the attack is a rear up stomp. The attack two is a tail whip, which can be used as a whip dealing heavy damage and knockback. Attribute one is a high resistance to weather. It is immune to tornadoes after a 0.8 growth. And attribute two is that when walking, its footsteps can knock back other creatures. And finally, its third attribute is the ability for the dinosaur to walk backwards, which I didn't actually know about until my girlfriend told me about, which is it's really interesting. I, I thought it, I thought a lot of dinosaurs in the game could do that. It looks like it's only a Patasaurus that can. Lurdosaurus is next. This is a semi-aquatic herbivore and is actually the only semi-aquatic herbivore in the game, but the dinosaur has two different attacks. Attack one is a jab with its foot spike, high damage and slow attack speed. Attack two is actually two different attack types, depending on where you are. In the water, it's like Ichthyovenator's dart ability, and on land, it's a stomp, similar to a Patasaurus. Erictodromius is next. This is the smallest creature in the game. The little Erictodromius can burrow and hide away from its foes. Its first attack is a peck, low damage but fast cooldown, and it has a secondary sand attack, which is where it kicks up sand into people's eyes and blinds them disables, jump, and slows their sprint speed as well. The dinosaur can also create its own burrow, which seems very fun. Parasololophus is a medium-sized herbivore in Bisa Bermuda and is the third ornithopod in the game, coming with two attacks and one ability. The first is a stomp attack, similar to Lurdosaurus. A headbutt, which is a forward attack, does moderate damage and low ability power cost. And finally, you've got a warning cry, which allows the dinosaur to lock onto any enemy and highlight the enemy for all group members to see. Everybody's favourite bonker comes in next. This is Pachycephalosaurus, a playable omnivore in Bisa Bermuda, and it's something that you should be, be careful of because it is really a big threat. Its head ram inflicts moderate damage but applies knockback to its opponent. Charge which is initiated when sprinting at full speed and then both of these attacks inflict injury damage to wherever they hit as well so be careful. Jin's Ceratopsian, Kuhila Ceratops is next in this roster and if you aren't aware of course like I've said this was suggested for Jin or by Jin who is a YouTuber who I definitely recommend you check out. Kuhila is an omnivore meaning it also eats me as well and it's a Ceratopsian. It has a headbutt attack which does significant damage as well as bleed and its secondary attack is called Gore. It does significant damage, injury, bleed and kickback or knockback but uses a lot of ability power and stamina drain as well. Finally you've got Cychania, the pebble, the Ankylosaurid which is the last herbivore in this list. Probably the most defensive dinosaur in this list as well in terms of playstyle because it's very defendable and very slow. Its tail swipe akin to all ankylosaurids uses that tail club to deal high damage and injury and costs a moderate amount of ability power when done. Its secondary ability is the same but instead of going to the right it goes to the left or the other way around it goes to the right instead of the left. The special ability is also called Spiky Shield, meaning that it reduces incoming damage for a few seconds. Attacks will be reflected back to the attacker as well, which means they also get hurt as well, which is really interesting and really nice. Anyways, what do you guys think about the herbivores? I know they're all playable. Which one is your favourite? I really love playing Kuhila Ceratops. But yeah, let me know which one you like the most. Now, so far we have three aquatics in the game, however there is an additional two that will be coming to Bisa Bermuda. Firstly, let's just get into one that isn't in the game yet. This is our Chelon. An interesting addition because our Chelon is a massive turtle and it won't really fit in the ecosystem of Bisa Bermuda because its current aquatics are very dangerous. I would imagine this being the Sarchania of the ocean. Elasmosaurus is the pool noodle. This is a long-necked Elasmosaurid dinosaur, of course. Well, it's not even a dinosaurs and the Lasmosaurid marine reptile and this is obviously the pool noodle that everyone knows and loves the fastest aquatic in the game out of the current existing ones and although it's a lot weaker than the others it makes up for that in this speed 
It has a quick bite as its primary attack, which is similar to the Raptors because it's a lot weaker, but it has a quick cooldown. A long range dash is its second, allowing the Elasmosaurus to rocket towards anything at rapid speeds, which can also use it to jump out of water. Elasmosaurus can also grab young creatures by holding the ability key. Chronosaurus is next. This is actually one that I played recently and I found was fairly interesting to play just because it seemed quite fun because of one ability that I really like. Chronosaurus is probably one of the strongest predators in the game and it's very powerful with its bite attack as it is its primary attack. Its secondary attack is a lunge which allows the chrono to boost out of the water at massive speeds or boost in general. The highest the bar the more the boost is. And finally Chronosaurus when specced into its highest specs can actually become invisible which I really love the idea of. Just imagine that being able to swim at invisibleness and uh, not be able to be spotted. I like that idea. Mosasaurus is next and this is a aquatic which I have played in Beast of Bermuda. In fact it was the first aquatic I played in Beast of Bermuda and it's the one that I died as many many times. Be fair you know I, I, I have lost this a lot and it's a force to be reckoned with despite me failing with it. Its primary attack bite uses its powerful jaws it has the ability to inflict substantial damage and injury to what it bites. And its secondary attack is a long range dart attack like that of Ichthyo Venator. This causes it to rocket forward and inflict damage on anything near it and its special ability allows Mosasaurus to grab smaller creatures in its jaws and while holding them it can thrash and then cause more damage. Finally we have Paleophis which is a massive snake and I don't know how this will work in the game. This is actually a semi-aquatic so it can go on land as well but yeah it's picked by a donator. Very interesting much like Archelon but this is just a big snake and it's uh, an interesting one at that. Finally, for the flyers, there are three flyers in Beast of Bermuda, and two of them are already playable. Firstly, you've got Pteranodon, everyone's favourite, the pterosaur that everybody knows and loves, is able to soar and glide through the air at incredible speed. Its bite attack allows it to be angled forward with both RMB and LMB. It goes forward or down when it's biting, and it has a dart attack as well, which allows it to go straight into the water, catch fish, or just deal damage to other opponents. You could swoop down and attack other dinosaurs like that, and it's really cool. Tropiognathus is next, the final playable in the roster of this video. Tropio is a resilient flyer. It's capable of flying through storms and has a large amount of health as well. It has wing beat, which allows the creature to hit players with its wings, knocking back the player and dealing significant damage, and it also has the ability of Master of Disguise, which gives it a baseline re weather resistance of 3 out of 3, which is very strong. Finally, we have Tape Jara or Tapajara, which is not in the game yet, but is an upcoming pterosaur for the game. Personally, I'm excited to see this one because Tapajara is one of my favourite pterosaurs. I was very happy to see this one on the roster because I didn't actually know it was coming to the game, but now I do, and I'm quite excited for this one. And and that, ladies and gentlemen, is everything. Everything in Biso Bermuda that is coming to the game. Let me know your thoughts about this because there is a lot here to go through. A lot of creatures. So yeah, I want to know which one you're most excited for. Which one on the base roster now you like the most. Let me know. I'd love to know. But other than that, guys, I do hope you enjoyed this video. My first Biso Bermuda video. So I do hope you enjoyed it. Do you want to see more? Let me know in the comments. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you all in the next one. Have a great day. Peace.